Hey, how's everybody doing? What's going on, Pat? What's up, Patrick? How are you, man? Doing good. Got that uh, GMB back. The one I nice. The one you were fighting with last week. Yeah, I appealed like eight times, and finally, finally, they gave in. And uh, you just gotta get lucky once, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just I had it like eight times and got it all. Nice, man. Yeah, that persistence is is key with those GMBs that um, they kind of stick in pending and they get stuck. Um, but yeah, man, congrats. Congrats on that. Cool. All right. What else we got? We got Neil, I think, from, from Florida. What's up, man? How you doing, Pat? Good, man. It's good to see you on here. Yeah, I haven't been on. Uh, quite honestly, I, I don't know how to do lead generated yet. I got one of my guys that's working with me has been utilizing it. Yeah. Um, so I haven't trained up in it yet. I've been more on learning the new snaps and the, all the other stuff. And right. I, I kind of put the cart before the horse and I have like 20 businesses like lead gens. Right. That are starting to get leads from all over. And so, and I've had a bunch of successful GMBs. So that's good. That, that's, yeah, that's a good way to come out of the gate, man. I know that a lot of people, they, they don't come out that way and they get discouraged when their stuff isn't, uh, isn't really popping, you know? Well, right now I'm waiting on postcards though. I've got four postcards. I got people that I know that are waiting on them. Right. And I just resent, resubmitted for them to resend the postcard on three of them the other day. So hopefully that'll happen. Hey, Patrick, uh, yeah. I don't think you're live in the group, uh, Patrick. I, I am, I can see it. Yeah, oh, I'm I see him. Yeah. Maybe do a refresh. I did twice. I'm double checking my work here. I see some comments going on there, and okay, cool. Oh, you know what? I'm on the page, not the group. My bad. Yeah, that page group confusion is is kind of common, huh? <laughs> it's real. <laughs> cool, man. Cool. How you doing, Jeff? Uh, I'm doing good. Just um, slinging leads. Slinging leads, man. Slinging leads, man. A local lead peddler. <laughs> yep, something <laughs> like that. Cool. How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's been uh, a lot, a lot of meetings today, and um, there you go. I, I've got a, uh, I've got a couple people that I might be passing off to you. Um, that came in interested in the software, like some small business owners that that are looking for lead gen stuff too. So. It's kind of a cool way to get your foot in the door when they they hear about the software and then it's like oh you have a marketing company too we could really use your help because they were just trying to use it to run their local business so um it was like a good opportunity but uh yeah. cool Let's see who else we got on the call here we got mr lou what's up buddy how you doing is that your daughter yeah hey patrick this is my daughter valentina yeah she's a, a wicked closer man like oh yeah you might want to add her to your team when we're, we're when looking ready to get to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> we always got room for another closer. I hear you. She'll pay for herself, man. You give her a <laughs> shot. Cool, man. I think I saw a post for you from you about um, like a CRM to organize your leads. And I was, was that you who put that? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why I jumped on if I, if you don't mind me asking. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, man. Um, we'll go <laughs> That. I actually thought you had a subscription, but we've got a lot of users now, and it's been hard to keep no, up. I, yeah, no, I do have a subscription. I mean, I, I yeah, man, I've been with you since the beginning. I, I, I love so. it. I just, uh, I, maybe I haven't dived deep <clears throat> enough, but, like, what I'm trying to do is track deal flow on commission, and uh, maybe I'm just missing how to do that. So I don't know if you could review that. Yeah, Absolutely. Let's um, let's start off with that today because that's a that's a that's an important piece of the system. Yes. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And are you able to see it? You guys see my screen? Yes. Hang on one second. I lost the ability to see you guys when I shared that. Okay, cool. So I heard someone say yes. So yes, I did. Okay, awesome. All right, so. Lou, like there's seven different modules that make up lead generated, 
Okay, the, the first one and kind of where this thing started was the lead management module. Every, every other one we added afterwards, but I had the same problem that you had. And that's where this system came from really is I'm like, oh, we got all these leads coming in and they're going to different email addresses. And I'm like, my head's gonna explode trying to figure out who's got what, right? So that's, that, that was where this really started. So the lead management module, what this does is it plugs into um, every website, Basically, all your websites can be pulled, your leads from those can be pulled into the lead management module here. So, and then what you can do is you can have, you can sort and search and kind of filter by anything that you choose. So all these columns right here, these are all customizable and everything that can be searched is one of those columns. So maybe the missing piece is if you go over here to like website forms, Every website, every company, that's kind of like in our system, a company is essentially a website. So every company has its own form. And then you can reuse the same form or you can make a new one for your companies. Okay. So these are some of the, so there's like this association between your website and this form. So I'll, I'll show you an example. So this is a form here. This is our form builder. So you basically can choose fields from the right and then you add them over here. And this is what is actually in the form. So there's a couple points of confusion with this system and I've thought about how to make it simpler and I haven't come up with a good way to do it, but it's coming from the fact that this is like a really, just a lot of, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of flexibility. So it's hard to make that simple when you, when you have all these different ways that you can twist and bend it, right? So, but all the fields that are in here are what's on the form. These fields do not need to be on your website but it just kind of like plugs into here. So for instance, maybe you have like um, commission, I think is what you mentioned, right? Like if you have like some sort of commission deal, what I could do is I could make a field and I'm gonna get this option when I try to create a new field, right? So I have all these different things to choose from. So these are all the things that, you know, if you're using like WordPress or Weebly or um, Snaps or whatever it is, Whenever you build a form, you have all these options, right? So this is just like that. So a text field, that's usually gonna be for like a phone number, an email, this type of information. Checkbox, that might be, hey, you need landscaping, what services do you need? I need like tree trimming, tree removal, and you can have people like make multiple checks, right? We've got radio buttons. So typically that's gonna be like a yes or a no situation. Um, you've got your select, which is like a drop down box, right? So. I could choose between one of several different options that are preset. We've got autocomplete, which just allows you to type, maybe if you've got like state, if you've got like a nationwide thing and you wanna have the person type in the first few letters and then it will choose from, from that. Text area is kind of like the comments box, like where you're gonna type in a sentence where it's like, hey, um, I've got a tree in my backyard and I need to have it removed. It's hanging over the fence. Someone wants to type in all this like stuff and it's a little bit bigger, right? This text area one is kind of like a special field. If you get questions with this sometimes, notice that it says check for spam. So those keywords on your spam list within, and we'll go over this in just a minute, Lou. So those keywords, if you click on this button, it's gonna check these keywords. This is the only field that it will check the, 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 um, the keywords in because this is the one that's kind of meant to be a, um, an area where people are going to type in sentences. The other ones we have like phone and, and email, we have specific filters for those. Okay, so let's say I want for commission, what, am I, what, what type of field am I, am, I, am I going to want to use? Probably a text field because that's going to be a number that's going to change. It's not something that we can just define, right? So, and then maybe I'm going to make this called commission amounts. And it's important if you want to look professional to be able to spell. Okay, so commission amounts, right? And I'm gonna leave this other stuff blank, okay? And now I've added it over here into this custom field. So you can make as many of these custom fields as you like. And I'm just gonna add it over into this, into this form here. So now it's on the bottom here. And if I wanna put it in a different spot, I can drag it around. So I said earlier, not all these fields have to show up on your actual website. So there's a few different ways that you can get the data from your website into these fields. So it's kind of like, let's go back one second because I know there, this can be confusing for people. This is probably one of the areas that causes the most confusion in our system. 
So what we need to do is we need to take like data that comes in from your, your form submission on, on your website and stick it kind of in these holes, right? It's got to know where to put it. So it's important whatever fields you have on your website that they're on the form, but the fields that are on the form, they don't necessarily need to be on your website, right? Like we wouldn't want to put commission amount on your website. Okay, so let's go back over here. You can use this in a few different ways, right? So Lou, what, what types of sites are you using Weebly? No, I'm on Snaps now. Oh, you're on Snaps? Okay, so with Snaps, the option, the best option is probably our embeddable form, right? So you can build the form within our system and then you can paste a little piece of code into Snaps. It'll work on every website that's out there because it's just basic HTML, which is like what web pages are built in. So, but how do we control which one of these fields from here actually show up on the website? So there's this little guy right here next to each field and he kind of helps us out. So if I click on him, I can say whether he, it's included in the embedded form, right? So that decides. And then also I can control whether this field is visible to our clients. It has to be visible to be able to be editable. So for commission, for tracking your commission, let's go look at that one. So the way I would set this up, I'll click on this little guy. I don't want this to show up on the website. So I'm gonna uncheck that one. I don't want, so the lead email, as a lead comes in and it gets sent to your client, it, um, this field shouldn't be included in that email because this is something we're just kind of managing internally. It's not like the lead information getting passed to our client. So I'm gonna turn that off, but I'm gonna allow the clients to see it and edit it. So that means if your client logs in and he goes and look at the, looks at this, he can see this field and he can actually make changes to this field. Okay, so I'm gonna click on save and I'll click save over here. Okay, so now this is my general leads template. Okay, so some companies are using this and some companies are. I'm just gonna go back to, um, I'm gonna go back a step here to look at which one of our sites are using this, this template here, the general leads template. So we can see that Bob's Barnes is one of the companies that's using it. So if I go to add a new lead for Bob's Barnes, it's going to have all these fields because, right? So there it is. There's like a commission amount right here. Okay. So now my client could log in if this was like a real lead. So let's just say Patrick, and then it looks like email is required. So Bob at AOL.com. This Bob at AOL.com, if I ever meet this guy, he who owns this, he's going to beat me up because he's received countless tests from me over the years. All right. So we're going to leave this blank. Maybe, maybe I'll just put a message in here. Hey, I need some tree work done at my house. Okay. So let's pretend that this lead came through as a form submission from this tree site and it's in here and this is it. And like, it will be sent to our clients. So kind of like an important concept to understand with how this works is lead flow. So it's, it's kind of the cornerstone to the system for lead management. So if we look at this, this cool picture that we have here, um, I'm just gonna make it a little bigger so you guys can see this. So as somebody comes to our website, right? They visit our tree care website. There's really three things they're gonna do. First thing, which they're gonna do most of the time, unfortunately, no matter how awesome we are, is they're gonna leave our website and nothing's gonna happen. So a good conversion rate might be like five to 8%. Right? So that means 92 to 95% of the time, they're just going to be leaving. It's like so most people just don't buy on the first time. It's just not how it works. Sometimes what they're going to do is they're going to call us. So they're going to call us and then there's like a couple of different pathways. So down here, the goal of the lead management system is really to get the lead to the client. And we use a few different things to make sure that's happening. We have a field called progress, which is like tracking whether the lead's been sent to the actual client or not. So if it's a phone call, it's going to come in and there's, we've got a few different common patterns that probably exist in your guys' agencies. So the first one is the calls forwarded directly to your client, right? So, so they receive the lead and that's kind of like the finish line. They get it. So the role that lead generated plays in that situation is it's just like tracking that call. So we're not really doing much. If you're using call sling um, or the Zapier connection, then it's tracking it and it's in our system, right? So 
maybe sometimes, Lou, you don't have a client yet, right? So you're answering the call and then you're trying to use this as kind of a carrot to find new clients, right? So hold on one second. My man, Jason, I'm just going to mute you, brother, because we're getting a little feedback from you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No worries, man. If you, if you need to, if you have a question, just unmute yourself. Okay. So you, you take the call and you're answering the call and then you're going to find a client to send it to, or perhaps you're in the situation. So in, in the agency with Jeff and I, we have a few clients where um, we have to take the calls for one reason or another. Maybe this client does this type of work and this client does another type and we don't want to waste the lead. So we put a receptionist there and they take the calls and make the decision and they send them out. Or one guy covers the North part of town, the other guy covers the South part of town. So there's a lot of situations where that can happen. So in this way, you're going to enter your lead manually. And that's what I just did. I made that lead manually. I came over here and I clicked on add new lead and filled out that little form. Okay. So, and then the lead is going to get added in and then it's going to get sent to the client manually. So then that's the touchdown. They, they, it gets to the finish line there. They receive it. With the form submissions, the way this works, and this is where this system, I, I mean, it, this is obviously super useful, but it really shines with this form submission because there's a ton of automation that's happening here. So you connect your site from snaps or whatever, and it comes inside here and it's gonna instantly be available inside of our system. And we're gonna look at the spam rules and we're gonna look at that message and we're gonna be like, it's kind of, it's our spam. It's kind of like a bouncer standing there saying like, are we gonna let you in or not? So based on the rules, it's gonna say, yes, you're good to go or no, you're not. So when you use that embedded form, one of the really powerful things that you can take advantage of is our IP address filter. So these spam filters, it says WordPress only, that's actually not true. It's the embed forms as well. So 99% of the spam that's hitting our agency is coming from outside the United States or like, you know, a lot of it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have a lot of lead gens in China and Russia, but that's where most of it's coming. So you can block out these sites. So what I do in my agency, since all mine are in the United States, is I'll just block out the entire world, except for like the United States and Canada. You see, I have the United States unchecked here. So it's able to pull that IP address. It knows where it's coming from. It doesn't matter what they type. It's automatically going to block it. So in my agency, with between three and 400 sites, we get about 16,000 spam messages a month. Okay. This thing, I think it's been six months since we've had a real message get mixed in with the spam. And that's because they did something weird. I think it was for like a swimming pool building contractor. And they said, hey, I saw those sexy swimming pools you have on your site. And we had sexy as a keyword, right? So it marked it as spam. So, but most of the time people don't do strange stuff like that, right? So, and then there's probably like, I don't know, maybe 10 leads or 15 leads a month that get through our spam filters. And then we look at them and we adjust and we make it harder for those to get through next month. So we have, I don't know what the math is, but um, 10 to 15 leads and we're probably getting 10,000 leads a month for our clients. It's really, really strong to not have to make that decision 16,000 times on whether this is real or not, right? So that's, the, that's kind of what, how that's working there. So if we go back to our awesome graph here, if it decides that it's spam, it's going to leave it in that quarantine area for 30 days. And if it's not, it's going to let it through and it's going to go to this next step. And it's going to look to see if auto forwarding is turned on. So if auto forwarding is turned on, then it's automatically going to send it to the client that's assigned to it. And you can turn it on for one client and not another if you have it sent to, if you have multiple clients associated with the company. If it's not turned on, it's just going to sit there and wait for you to make a decision. So you give it the option to make it automated or manual. Try. I'm getting sleepy. Yeah. Nikel, I am also going to mute you just because we're getting some feedback from you, man. But if you got a question, feel free to unmute. Okay, so that's kind of how that's working, right? So if we go back here now that we have this overview, this one has not been sent. I, I created it manually. If I click on email lead, if I had a client assigned to this, which I do not apparently because this is just dummy data with the fictional, um, you know, client or fictional company, but my client can log in and see this. Since they have a login, they can come in. They could say, hey, we closed that deal and uh, the commission amount should be $400. Or maybe you want to put like closed deal amount and you can figure out your own commission, right? 
So now you have that tracked and this is where this gets really powerful. So let's step back to all leads. So you can create all of these columns. You can, you can add any of these. So we added commission amount, right? So if I look, there's commission amount. I can click on save and that's gonna be displayed here now. And I can add in filters if I want to like, hey, show me the commission, like show me the ones that have this commission amount, right? Um, I don't know where it is, it's on here somewhere, commission amount, right? So then I can search by this stuff. So what this means is that you guys have the ability to basically build this CRM to work how you want it, track whatever you want, sort, search, filter on whatever you want. So that's kind of the trade-off for, yeah, it's a little bit, there's some confusing areas on how this works, but with that comes a lot of power to be able to kind of bend and twist this thing however you want, you know, and I can go through and, and mix all these filters together, right? You have the ability up here to export these. So you could export these to a spreadsheet. So also like, let's say you've got like all these different clients and you want to like, this is where you wouldn't want to put this stuff in Google Sheets, Lou, if you're paying for the software, have it all come in here, right? And then you can look at it a million different ways where Google Sheets, it's just going to be really hard for you to make those filters. Every company is going to have its own dashboard here, right? So I've got these different dashboards. Hang on one second. Let me, let me load this thing up with some dummy data from the back end real quick. Um, so the dashboards are really powerful. You can look at things a lot of different ways and uh, just give me one second. There's all sorts of graphs and, um, you know, if we go over here, um, where is it? Leads. Do not have that graph on here. Maybe it's the, oh, oh there we go. So you, you can start looking at things by progress, by type, by source. And then if you were to go to the actual client, um, let me find a client here. So go down here to settings and then users, all users log in here and we were to go and look at one of these clients we can look at if we go to graphs maybe i've got like four different um i've got multiple different clients i can look at by site or if i've got like multiple sites that are feeding one client i can kind of get a percentage breakdown of where they're coming from like okay like this is coming from this one this is coming from this other one right so it gets really, really powerful. And we're going to keep leveling this up to add more and more information. So from a lead tracking standpoint, you know, like I said, we have 10,000 leads coming through our agency on a monthly basis. And I don't know how I would run it if I didn't have this in here. So um, I thought when I saw that, I was like, man, I think he has lead generated, but I didn't go through and check. And, um, you know, it's, it, it can certainly make your life a lot easier though. Does that, does that make sense on how this is working? Yeah, no, absolutely. I appreciate you running through all of that because I, pretty much like everyone else, you know, I was just using it for heat maps in the beginning. And now, you know, now I've got to figure out how to deal with lead flow. So this, this is perfect. Um, yeah. The I only mean, question, the only question I have is like, so I moved over to call rail a few months back. Does that work via Zapier to get those calls into here as well? Do you know? I can neither confirm or deny Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I, uh, I, I've heard rumors that it does, but I, I, you know, um, the, the phone system that we're currently supporting per my agreement with Dan is, is call sling. So, um, yeah, no, I, I got you, man. That's all good. Yeah, I, I, cool. I, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So I think if this works correctly, hopefully we've got some test data in here now. There we go. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so, so, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that you can do once you get this in here to kind of analyze this. One of the cool things that you can also do with this, it's, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. I think it's pretty underutilized, but as you expand into um, other cities, let's say that you, you know, an easy to understand example would be like if you had a swimming pool cleaner in Las Vegas, okay, and then you want to try to, you decide, I'm going to take the show on the road. And I'm going to start a swimming pool site in LA, but I don't have any, I don't I, like, how am I going to advertise these people? LA? I'm going to build my legion up. Maybe I want to run Facebook ads, right? So I think Facebook has like 50,000 data points on us of just all sorts of creepy stuff that 
we hope they don't know, but they, they probably know, right? So we can use that data to try to go into a new market. And this is how you do it. So let's say I've got my Las Vegas pool cleaning and I'm going to filter by, by that. So I've got, I'm, I filter by my pool cleaning um, site, which there may or may not be one. We'll pretend that this Anthony's Cake Shop is this pool cleaning. So I click on search and I've got my list, right? And then I come up here and I click to export Facebook audience. So I'm going to export this and it's going to only do the ones that are that are highlighted here. So it's only going to grab these 434 leads that have come through for pool cleaning in Las Vegas, right? And I'm going to export this to a Facebook audience. And then I'm going to take this information, which has like name, email, maybe address, this type of stuff. And I'm going to upload it into Facebook and I'm going to say, Facebook, here, here are the people that I know are my clients. So this is a custom audience. That's what it's called. I'm going to create a custom audience with this stuff. And then I'm going to say, Facebook, I would like to make what's called a lookalike audience based on these people in this other city. So that's where Facebook says, OK, let me look at these 434 people. Let me see if I can match these up to accounts that exist inside Facebook. And if they do, I'm going to look and find out what they have in common. And I can say, Facebook, I'm going to tolerate a 1% difference. So Facebook's going to use those 50,000 creepy data points, and it's going to find people that have stuff in common. So somebody that has a swimming pool, there's a lot of the demographics that um, they're going to have in common, right? So it's it's going it's going to probably eliminate people that are not homeowners, right? Or it's going to eliminate people that are not of a certain income threshold that can afford that. So who knows what it what they have on it? But this means it's going to shrink our target audience when we go to LA, and it's going to make our ad campaign very targeted on the exact demographic that we want to hit, which is going to make our ad a lot more effective, right? So you can export it that way. You can always export this with whatever columns you want here. I know that we recently had a bug where it wasn't doing that. We fixed that. So that should be working. And if anyone's watching that, that was dealing with that. So you can choose whatever columns you want. And, um, you know, from there, you can export it and have that data if you, you know, if you ever wanted to go back to a Google Sheet. But I think once you learn how this works, you're never going to want to use Google Sheets for this again. Right. Cool. Definitely. Right. Thank you. You you are welcome. Is there a video on that, Patrick? Or yeah. So what I covered right there is a lot of this is in. So as you sign up for this account, for those of you guys that haven't got into this and you're just like, hey man, that heat map tool is so cool. I'm just going to focus on that. We've got this step by step guide for each of these modules, right? So this is the the lead management module. I need to do some updates because we've been. I need to do some updates on on some of these videos and add some additional ones because we've been we've been adding stuff in here and I haven't caught it up. But basically, this will take you from getting started like step by step. So you can click. Here's a video that explains lead flow. So that article that we were just talking about right here with this amazing. <laughs> right. So that's right here in this video. And that's kind of me explaining that. And then there's email settings and every step that you need to do to kind of get the lead management set up and then. So as you do them, you kind of check this off. And there's also articles, right? If I click on this, it's going to take me to that, that article that we were just on for lead flow, right, right here with the graph and explaining a lot of the stuff that, that I just went over. So I know that I go fast, um, but you've got these resources here to kind of rely on if you got questions, right? All right. I see Mr. Jarrett Miller. What's up, man? What's up, man? I just wanted to let y'all know I'm not, I'm still alive. You're still so. alive. You're working hard over there, aren't you? Yeah, man. I'm grinding every day. Every single How's business? Business is going really good, man. I've had a lot of leads come in the last couple of days um, for some big ticket niches. You know, probably I sent a guy probably close to $200,000 worth of leads jobs in the last two weeks with Kitchen and Concrete. So, looking to close that deal pretty soon as far as flat rates and stuff. So, um, right. Yeah, man. Let, let me ask you this, Jared. Like, I think over the last like um, four months or so, you've, your business has kind of really just taken off, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all, it's all, you know, I got a lot of shoes on the shelf. So all those shoes on the shelves are starting to um, make money generate leads right um, and then, the baby shoes are turning into adult shoes yeah and so i'm starting to get um even repeat customers and referrals and things like that so where people are saying hey you know call this guy for websites call this guy 
for this and all of that stuff. So I think yeah. that has to do it with do with it too. Grinding. Let me ask you this. So, how long have you been using this business model? Like JK, like the uh, lead gen stuff. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I got in in January of 2020. Okay, so so you were essentially in it for like 10 or 11 months before you started moving into this phase where stuff really started to take off, right? Right. No, yeah. It, it, I was doing the stuff I think everybody does, like SEO, website design, um, you know, building out those platforms to where you get a lead here and there, you make commission money on it. But now it's starting to, to generate to where um, even using like your heat map tool to where you're starting to generate more leads for different types of services where you're just not getting the, you know, the normal concrete repair, but now you're starting to get concrete repair and now you're starting to get foundations and parking lots mm -hmm. and commercial jobs and things like that, where you start ranking for all of those different things. Um, and that's where I think the bigger money comes in, you know? So what do you think changed? Do you think it was just a, a question of you, you built these sites and it, it took some time for them to mature or did you kind of have any shift that happened where some of these people that maybe are where you were four to six months ago haven't made that shift yet. Do you have some advice for them or, or kind of looking back now, what, what you learned from all this? Well, I think um, the biggest shift I think has happened to me is understanding what kind of uh, power you have, I guess. Like power is the right word. Like I tell uh, my wife or everybody all the time, like if I'd have known this, five years ago or 10 years ago, I'd be a millionaire right now. And so um, being able to, to know and understand the skills and to, I think, continually grow that skill um, and not be afraid to take chances, right? I think that's one of the biggest things that I, I see a lot of people are afraid to take chances. And I joke around all the time, like I, I get more GMB suspended than people have, right? Um, because, you know, I just go for it and I don't care what happens. And I think, um, I wish I would have went for it sooner. Like I limited myself to three sites a month for the first eight months and which is good. I mean, I had 24, 25 sites, but you know, now I'm, I'm doing as many as I can possibly do, mm -hmm. um, as soon as I can do them. Um, yeah, that, that was a big thing for me too, man. I, it took me, uh, I think I was at two or $4,000 a month for the first 18 months or two years that I was in this. And then it just kind of clicked in my head that, well, there's a really strong relationship between the number of sites and how much money people are making in this industry. And I just went crazy. You know, it started out with a contest where they, they uh, Dan said, who can build um, 10 sites in 24 hours? And, and I think I was the only one in the group. I think maybe Helen Helper um, might've done it, but there, there wasn't very many people. And so I was like, man, if I can build 10, I probably had 15 sites after two years. And then we built 10 sites in, in 24 hours. And, and now I think those 10 sites, it's, it's been a few years since that contest, but I think those 10 sites are probably bringing in 15 to $20,000 a month from those, those 10 sites. Like every single one of them is ranked. It took, it took a while to rank. And you know, the fact that we built 10 sites in 24, we certainly didn't have 10 clients in 24 hours. You just had 10 things that would later be worth something, you know, and, and um, I've told this story several times, but I was at that, uh, a reload event and I was trying to figure out, looking at all these, like the top students, I'm like, what is, what's the special sauce these guys have? Like, is, you know, I was just, it's kind of idiotic looking back on how my mind was looking at these people, like they were some kind of gods of like what do they like what is it with this per like how do they do it what's their secret right and they were all different that like all of them like some were tall some were good at talking to people some were good at this good at that but what they did have in common it hit me you know um two or three drinks in at the pool party on sunday it hit me like a load of bricks that they have more sites than the people that are clamored around them to talk to them that's what they have in common and i i was having a good time man i was hanging out with Damien and some of these other people. And I was like, I don't want to be, I can't wait to get home and start building. And so between that like 10 site challenge, which was in April, and then the event was in June, we, I had gone from like, I was at like 8,000 when I got there. So whether I was at two or 4,000, I'd 
doubled or quadrupled it. And then 12 months later, we were at 40,000 a month. And all it was, was like, build, 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 just like get the shoes on the shelves. Some of these things are going to be duds. It's a, it's a numbers game, right? It's like, right. you know, if, um, if, if you're, if you're the single guy at the bar and you never go and try to talk to a girl, you're just hoping that one of them comes up and talks to you. But if you're the person that goes around and talks to all the girls, then you have a better chance of, uh, it's kind of that, like, let's get, let's, let's put some stuff out there. You're going to miss, you're going to miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Right. So I kind of went with that mentality and it sounds like what, what you've also learned based on what you just said, where it's like you were, you three sites over eight months. Now you're just like building it as quickly as possible. And you know, at some point these are going to turn into, you got the confidence that he's going to turn into something. Right. right. And, and I think so many people too, and I was the same way, was worried about, because when you go through the training, Dan emphasizes, which is the truth. Um, the riches are the in obscure niches, but like you can get rich or you can really make a good living on tree sites and towing sites. And so, you know, I kind of went really broad and was just looking for these and that paralyzed me a little bit. And I, I do think though that good money is in those obscure niches. I'm in some obscure niches too, but you know what, that kitchen site, that kitchen remodel site I built in a 400,000 person city that took eight months to rank. Well, now it's ranking and now I'm getting leads for it. So every one of those jobs might be worth twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. I mean, you know, I, I sent a concrete uh, lead to a guy and it turned into a commercial roof job and it, it might be a $250,000 job on, for this guy. So, you know, one concrete lead turns to a, a commercial roof lead. Now it might be a $250,000 quote, you know? And so if you're dealing with 5% of $250,000, it's a big hunk of change, you know? And yeah. so, um, but that took eight months for that, for those sites to rank. Cause I was just like, you know, piss on it. Let me just build it. And I built right. it, started doing it. And so, um, and I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not where some of them guys are where Adam McChesney, and, but he's been in for two years. So guess what? I know I'm going to be further along <laughs> when, when I hit my two year mark. Cause yeah. my goal is 40 grand a month at the end of this year. So, um, if I hit it, I hit it. But if I, if I miss it, I'll still be really in good shape. That's, that, that's right, man. I mean, um, it's, it's awesome to set these aggressive goals. And, you know, if, if, if you're trying to run a six minute mile, if you're at like a nine minute mile and you're trying to run a six minute mile and you get to six thirty, well, that's a lot better than nine. Right. And you're, you're closer to six now for the, for your next set of goals. So, when you, I, I kind of, I think it was last week I was talking about how important it is to set goals. You know, I am 10 days into mine, you know, I, I've got like 90 goal sprint, 90 day goal sprints that I do. So I'm 10 days into mine each week. You kind of like go through, look at your goals, see if you're on pace and then what adjustment do you need to make so that you can course correct and get back towards your goal because otherwise it's not going to happen. Right. And if you don't write this stuff down, if you don't like plan it out, it must not be that important to you. If it is really important. You take the time, do that. And now you've got like a schedule. All you got to do is follow a schedule, right? Like making money can be on a schedule, right? If, if we say like, I want to get to 10 grand a month in six months, well, you should probably be somewhere near five grand a month in three months, or if it's going to be linear, right? Which this is not really a linear business, but you need to define why that, and you need to hit those, those goals. And it may be after three months, Hey, I've got all my sites built. Uh, you know, maybe I, need, I decided that I need 25 sites to get to 10 grand a month and I've got my 25 sites built, but they're not ranking yet. So plan it out of where you need to be. Like how many pages do you need to have? If this thing is going to rank by then, how many backlinks? And then you need to course correct. Like, right, right. How many reviews? How many GMBs? So maybe you need to do more work. Maybe you, you didn't plan this out, right? But if you had a boss... And you're going to get fired if you don't deliver. You're going to try to do everything you can. I mean, if you care about your job, you're trying to do everything you can to make sure that you deliver. But when we're working for ourselves, it's just like, well, we can justify and be like, well, like this and that and whatever. Like, so then it just kind of like it, that justification process is a slippery slope that just leads to like mediocrity in my mind. You know? Right. So yeah, I think too, um, and I'll jump off real quick, but I think is you know, tuning into things like this, tuning into the lives, uh, reading a bunch of books, right? Like I know you profit first, uh, the Z myth revisited. I mean, and just learning because 
you know, I've come from a work hard mentality and kind of own my own business. But as far as the entrepreneur stuff, um, never really got it. And so I had to do a lot of changes in me, right? A lot of changes in me to, yeah. to get where I'm at. And I think that's a big issue too. Because if you're, you're thinking you're going to stay exactly the same way and you're making, let's just say five grand a month or six grand a month now before you start this business, you're a five grand a month kind of person. So you got to, you got to change to a 40 grand a month kind of person or a 10 grand a month kind of person, right? Like success leaves clues. And so I started doing that right away and knew I had to change that. And so I think, yeah, helps. absolutely. I, I've done the same thing, man. I, 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 I probably read about a book a week, uh, right. maybe a week and a half. And I'm constantly listening to audiobooks and podcasts and stuff. And, and, you know, I still feel like I have so much to learn. You know, I know relative maybe to other people in JK, they might look up at me and, and think that, that I have it all figured out because I've got a successful business and a big business, but that's not how it feels at all to me. You know, I, I feel like relative to like, let's, let's not compare ourselves to stuff that's just going to make us feel good, right? Let's compare ourselves to, to where we want to go and what we aspire to be. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, I, I had a two hour conversation the other night with Caleb and, you know, if you guys haven't spoke to Caleb before, that guy is just absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, I'm talking to him and, and he's only got a few people working in his agency and he's running like this seven figure business. I asked him how many hours of work he w w works, how many hours a week he works. And he said, four, it's always working. It's just like, what, what's good? like, so like Caleb and I, we, we're talking, we're talking some deep level strategy stuff and he gave me some tips and there's things I'm going to go work on. Right. So there's, there's, there's always a way to keep improving no matter where you are. I think what you said really hits on something. We're an average of the decisions we've made in the past, right? So every decision we made has led us to who we are. And, you know, we don't all start at the same starting line, but as we kind of move through and get into our twenties and our thirties and forties and stuff, like we've had more and more time to adjust this. And you have, at some point, you've got to make a decision that like, Hey, I'm not happy with the way stuff is right now. Right. Like you, you, you made that decision. You're like, I want to learn more. I don't know enough to have the level of success that I want, want to have. So I'm going to read and I'm going to study and I'm going to just like take class. Like for me, um, I have a degree in accounting. Okay. And I haven't done it for like 20 plus years. And one of the things that's been obvious to me, the way Caleb runs his business is he has, like, he, he has an expertise in managerial accounting. So like that is the process of like understanding the cost of different parts of your business. How much does it cost you for maybe you're buying like an expired domain. This is one of the things that we were talking about. So you buy like an expired domain. He's got the, the D index percentage figured out. He knows how much he's doing, how much he's paying for these things and like what the value of it is. So I didn't have any of that. So I'm just kind of like some of the stuff, I didn't have it grilled down as much. So I'm going through and I actually, as exciting as it sounds, I, I'm willing to like do the things that, that are boring. I'm reading a managerial accounting book. I'm going to understand this thing and I'm going to get all the numbers in my business dialed down so that I can run this thing effectively. I've got to learn that skill set. If I want to like move on to the next level, then like I still have to level up, right? And we all got our kind of things that we're good at. You know, for me, I was always good at sales. That was that was the easy part for me. Other people aren't good at that. You have to make a decision. Are you going to get outside of your shell that so that you can get good at sales or hire somebody? Like you, either way, it can't be the reason why that. I mean, you can't let it be the reason that you don't get to the next level if that's what you're kind of aspiring to do, right? So um, this education is, is, is key and, and, you know, finding groups of people that you can mastermind with and, and talk with. And in these calls, like you said, I think they're, um, they're what helped me along the way, you know, for years, I didn't miss a call. I would, I would watch every single call and, or, or I'd like play it back. Right. So whenever there's good information, I'm like, okay, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm focused on. Right. The same way man i don't listen to music anymore i'm in my car i'm listening to calls or i'm listening to whatever other other guys and you know and the stuff comes out of you man and so like what dan says you just kind of spit that same stuff like the stuff we get here comes across to other business owners and we become the expert in business and you That's come right. i mean i've had people talk, hit me up just from facebook and say hey i know you're the guy to talk to just because i've posted in facebook a couple of times and yeah, I may not be the guy to talk to, but they don't know that. I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, 
yeah, it's, it's, it, you, you're presenting yourself as, as the one. And, and, you know, it, if I was a small business owner and like, I, I would be looking for somebody like you, that's kind of like this go-getter. That's like, so what if you're not the number one person at local Legion in the world, you only have to be better than the other people in that market. Right. Yep. So, you know, um, one thing that I want to, that I want to, that I want to go over, cause I know that there's a contest going on in the JK group for uh, due diligence and, um, we have this tool inside of We Generated, right? And the heat map gets so much attention that some of these tools get forgotten, but this tool is built for a reason. This is useful, right? So let's just talk. I'm just going to give an overview on how this works and then we can answer questions for it. And um, uh, Lawrence, I haven't had a chance to go through your video, but I know that you did the 100 due diligence sheets and he's given me some advice on how to make this better. And I'm all ears on how to make this better. So I, I'm going to go through that. And we're going to keep on adding to this. Some of the ideas that I have is to plug this thing into like Ahrefs and automatically pull some of that data in there to connect with like the Majestic um, API. So that way we can like pull the information you put in a website address. We can pull this in and pull it in for your competitors automatically. So we're going to keep on adding to this tool, but let's talk about how it works. So when we go to evaluate, uh, if we want to evaluate a niche, I can click up here and click on evaluate niche. And then it's going to ask me to... Um, it's going to ask me which sheet I want to use. So the default one is kind of that default JK one that we got, and it looks like this, right? So we can go through and we can fill out this information. This should look familiar to you guys because this is what came with JK, right? So let's say that I am going to do, um, we'll say the city of Chicago, right? And it's going to ask me to choose a, a new niche or an existing one. So it's, it's, I'm going to choose a new one and I'll say um, remodeling, right? And I'll say remodeling in Chicago. That's, I don't know what, how many people are in Chicago. What is that? Like, it's probably like four or 5 million that surround that whole area, whatever. I'll just put in here 1 million for now. Okay. So I'm going to fill this thing out. And at the end of it, it's going to ask me to save it. And then when I click on save, it's going to do nothing apparently. Okay, there we go. All right. So it's going to ask me for a score from one to 10. So this is kind of my subjective opinion on how good this niche is based on the criteria that I've answered in this, in this sheet, right? So let's say I give it a seven. I'm going to click on seven. I'll click save. That's going to take me back over here. So these are all the different due diligence worksheets that, that I've done in the past, right? So they're all listed here and I can easily go back in here and view one of these, okay? And, and look at what was filled out. I can sort and search by city, by niche, right? So we forced you to, to either create a new one or select one, right? So there's remodeling. So I could click on this and I say, show me the remodeling one. So there's my remodeling one. Or I could say, show me the remodeling ones that are in Chicago, right? That have a rating of seven. Right, so then I could go through and it's going to be this one because that's the only one, but it kind of gives you this like sor sorting and filtering stuff. You don't need to use this worksheet though. So what I would do is I would build out my own worksheet, right? And I was thinking about like giving you guys a worksheet, but I think I, let's, let's go and look at what this one is. Okay, so using our custom field. So this is the same tool that we were using when I was talking to Lou earlier about how, um, how to make those fields for the forms, the same thing, right? I can put in whatever fields I want. Some of the things that I would include if I were going to do due diligence on a niche is I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at who has the, the, the first I'm gonna, let's just, let's just go through this real quick. Somebody give me a, is there, is there anyone that has an idea for a niche that, that you want me to evaluate? And I'll just kind of go through it. So one, anyone looking at one that they're interested in? Catering. Catering. And then where do you want to look at it? Boston. Boston? Okay. All right. So this is my starting point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Bright Local. Okay. If you don't know what the main terms are, then you're going to need a tool that will help you. Um, and I could search for like Catering Boston. I'll just do this. Catering Boston. I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to look and see. So these are maybe some of the best terms. So there's a lot of tools out there that are going to tell you what has different search volume. So 
I'm just going to go for catering company as an example. So I'm going to say catering company here, right? Catering company. And then I'm going to choose Boston MA. So this is a free tool right here, but bright local. I brought this up on several, several calls, really, really valuable free tool. And what it does is it's going to give me a search as if I'm in Boston searching for this and I've never searched for it from it before. So it's going to give me like a clean search result. If I was searching from whatever random spot they picked in Boston for this search, this is exactly how my search result would look. Okay. So what I'm looking for is I, I just need a way. I want to get away into the heat map. Uh, and, and this will make more sense what I mean by that. So I'm going to choose this company here. They've got the most reviews. I know that they're second, but as we've seen in heat maps, when you do a search, this is only doing a search from one location in Boston, right? So the fact that these companies are ranking, it doesn't necessarily, this, this company could be ranking first only at this spot in the entire city of Boston. So let's not like go thinking that these guys are like the top dogs because they're probably not, right? These guys look more legit to me. So I'm just gonna use these guys as an example. So I've just copied their name. The next step is I'm gonna go over to Google Maps. So I'm gonna to go to maps.google.com or google.com slash maps. I'm gonna put that name in there. So there it is right there. So what I'm after really, and you can see that these people have this massive, look at this, they're covering like, it looks like three different states, four states. They've got pieces, they're, they're, they're covering this whole area. Okay, so just something to think about. So I'm gonna copy this. And what I want is I want their heat map URL. So I pasted that in there and this is gonna redirect to that map URL. You gotta give it a second. This is their map URL. Now I've got a way to locate this company in our heat map and I can do research on them. So I'm gonna close this one. Let's go back over here and we'll go over into our heat map. So what, I, what I'm trying to find out the reason I'm doing this is I want to find out who the top person is in town, right? So I'll do catering company. Our tool is smart enough to know based on that GMB location that the, it moved the map over here to Boston. And I'm going to set this up to be one mile and I'll do a 13 by 13 grid. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is going to make the grid be one mile between the points, 13 by 13 grid. I'm going to zoom out because I think it didn't, it's, our tool is automatically going to choose the middle of the surface area. So we look back at all this huge surface area that they have, right? Which is this massive area, it moved it over here, but I actually wanna know how we're doing. And I wanna find out who the top person is um, in, um, in Boston, right? Where did that go? Oh, it's here, okay. So I don't need to take this spot. I can just go over here and I can draw a square around Boston, right? Okay, so maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger because it looks like they have like some kind of beltway here. And let's just hit, if I don't want the ocean, then I can, um, I can use this tool to draw this however I want to just demonstrate that to you guys. Okay, so it's just gonna connect this when um, when I connect the two points. And then you can kind of move this around and play with this and get this however you want to, right? So now I've got this area here, and this is what I really want to know, who the best cater, who's ranking best for catering company. So I'm going to click on start. So we'll give that thing a minute. This is an intense process for our server because what it's doing is it's actually moving it to every kind of like longitude and latitude spot around there. Okay. so. How this company is ranking, I don't really care, but what I, I just wanna, I, this is what I mean. I needed a way to get into this map. I wanted to find a company that I could search with, use their map URL. So we'll let this thing run. And then afterwards, what I can do is I can, I can go and look at the averages, right? So, oops, hold on one sec. We're gonna have the results in just a minute, but while we're waiting on that, let's demonstrate something. If I was, trying to find out who the best roofing company was in Austin. I think that's where this is. No, this is uh, Great Falls. This is um, Montana. Okay, so this is for the city of Great Falls. So once the heat map comes back, you get this grid here and I can sort by average. So I can see instantly that Maddox Roofing is the top roofing company in this area, right? 
And if I want to look at the heat map from them, I can click that. And that's what their heat map looks like. Maddox is who I want to do my due diligence on. That's good. Maybe I'll do three, right? But they're going to be the one that, that like, this is my main term. I want to go and dive in and find out how well this company is actually doing. So I'm going to look at their backlinks. I'm going to look at their pages and like all this stuff. And when I build out that due diligence seat, I'm going to set this up in a way like, I don't really care, just, just so you guys know, if we think about what the heat map's actually doing, it's telling our score relative to everyone else. So the fact that they, this company has a 1.76, it doesn't mean that they're awesome. It means that they're better than everybody else that's in the market. They might be awful because the rest of the market could be, be terrible, right? So this is really, the score is really, it's, it's how they're performing, but how they're performing is a relative to everybody. It, do, it doesn't tell you whether it's tough or not. You can start to make some assumptions though. Like if that catering company is just like dominating all of Boston and we all know that Boston is a huge city and we know that catering is a tough niche, like then we can say, well, if they're crushing all of Boston, they may, I mean, that's, that's, that's a legit thing. But to be ranking really well in, Great Falls, Montana, that's a completely different scenario. It doesn't mean that they're like the king, the king of, like, I mean, they're the king of this hill, but it doesn't mean that they would, you know, they, they may be the big fish in a small pond, right? So just want to make sure that that's clear. Okay, let's go back and see. It looks like this. Hey, Pat, real quick, there's a couple of uh, questions from Andrew. Is there a way to check off a due diligence sheet after you put the lead gen, after you built the lead gen without deleting it? Andrew, can you clarify what you mean by check off? Uh, I think I understand it. I think you just kind of clicked in my head what he's asking. Right. Here's what you could do. Here's an idea. I think what you want to, I, okay. Let me, let me just say a bunch of words that don't mean anything for a while. And then I'll get back to my point here. Okay. So I think what you want to do is maybe you should make a field on your due diligence sheet because you can add in whatever fields you want and you could have a field that says um, whether it's uh, whether it's like sold or not, right? And then you could filter by whether like you could show show me the ones that are not sold. So that way it kind of eliminates that one. And if you get what I'm saying, like I, I I don't know if that's what you're trying to accomplish. Jeff, are you getting a response from him in the in the messages there? So I don't I'm have the not, first But I'm assuming it's it's you know how he's tracking what. Um, you know, after he's done the due diligence of what lead gens have been built based on that due diligence, and he wants to be able to track what's completed and what's not. That's what I got out of it. Yeah, so you could add in yeah. an extra field to kind of help manage manage some of that. Um, yeah, he gets it. Okay. And then, uh, quickly, uh, James Curry is offering that check out the Google u-u-l-e parameter it's what bright local facilitates the local searches so he added that in the chat of what you can add on the end of the url to get the same results as bright local Offer. oh okay i've never heard that but that sounds awesome yeah that's super cool um i, I haven't seen that before that's james seems like he's kind of got a good grip on the tech to be able to pull that out um so Let's just hop back over here now and let's let's dive into this a little bit and, and kind of go more through this due diligence exercise. So I think this one is probably completed now. Um, looks like maybe it still has a couple of circles to fill in. Okay. So we'll just give, give that a couple more minutes. Jeff, do we have any other questions in there? No, we're good right now. Okay, cool. So, hey, we'll, hey Patrick, I, I had a question if sure. I could. Yeah, I just noticed you do your radius for one mile when you search, and I, I usually do 2.5, and I, I've noticed my rankings are better if I do one mile, but it, do you have a preference or do you have uh, a methodology that works, or what's the difference really? So, it's, it's kind of like let, let's, let's, Let's imagine that it was 100 miles between each dot, right? Just for the, just to kind of like get, uh, understand this concept. So if we made it be 100 miles between each dot, what our system is going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to look at each one of those dots and try to determine 
who the best ranking person is at that dot. If we move 100 miles away and we choose another dot, look how much distance is in between there and the possibility that there could be all kinds of ranking. So it's, it's the, the, the smaller you make it, it's, it's always going to be accurate, but it's going to give you like, um, like if you make it so big, then it can, it can start to like, there could be a lot going on between the dots that you don't know about, right? So you need to think about like based on the city that you're working in. Another thing to consider that you may not have noticed what I did is I started out by making it one mile and then I drew my own, right? And I, so when you draw your own, you still have the same amount of dots, but I changed the size of it, right? So now the distance between the dots, when I change that size, kind of goes out the window, right? It's no longer, you can use this right here, it says 10 kilometers, so that would be accurate. But when you redraw it, you're basically taking, like you're spreading out more peanut butter over a bigger piece of bread, right? So it's like, it's, it's no longer one mile. Our system is like balancing. You said one mile, we gave it to you at one mile, then you changed it, now it's no longer one mile. So I just wanna make sure that that's clear. Does that, does that kind of um, clear up your question, Lou? Yeah, I mean, so the the more the more the the lower the mileage is for the radius, the more accurate the results are if it's a regular shape. Well, yeah, I, I guess the more it's, accurate it is right, but it's like the, these dots will be accurate at any size. But what you're you're making assumptions when we look at this that, like for instance, this is, says twenty and this says fifteen. Well, okay, let's say that this says 20 and this says 20, and maybe these are a mile apart. If the, like, we're making the assumption that every spot in between these two, two grid points that were also 20, and the bigger you make that, the larger that assumption is, right? So it's accurate at that point, and you can see patterns with these as you go across an area, but if you go across it, we've got a huge city here. Right, so we've got Boston, one of, the, one of the most populated cities in the country that's and, and densely populated. And we chose this big area, right? So this is like whatever, one, two, three, four. I don't know what this is. This is probably 15 miles across this area. And you can see that we're two and then we're 17 because like this is probably where their GMB is, where that two is. And, and this thing, what, what is definitely true is this thing is not completely accurate until it's finished and it almost looks like it's it's paused. I don't know if a bunch of people are running heat maps all of a sudden and, and like taxing our server, but um, it doesn't seem like it's moved in a few minutes here, but it's important to kind of know that it's, it's this, this is just, it doesn't mean that you're ranking 20th every spot in between here, right? And, you know, if this were, let's look at, let's look at this, one of these roofing ones, cause it will probably make more sense here notice there's patterns that exist across here, right? This is like getting, kind of goes from like green in the middle. This is probably where the GMB is. And then it's moving up here and it's kind of like the numbers go up, right? And then for whatever reason, they come slightly down. Maybe this is like less populated, but you'll notice these big patterns. And, and when we look at this, we're kind of making assumptions, right? We're saying that you're ranking sixth here and you're ranking sixth here. We could probably assume that you're probably ranking six right here, but we didn't run the heat map there. We ran it on these spots, right? Okay, so Neil, I don't know why our heat map is kind of like pausing on that catering thing. Um, maybe well, it's funny. Decided. my family uh, has a catering company in Boston. That's why I was. Okay, well, let's, for, let, let's like, let's dive down this. I'm, I'm just gonna, because that's taken a minute, I'm just gonna use this roofing one. It's the same exact sure. concepts here. So this is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out who the top roofing company is in this area. So the averages, this is why we built this. So we saw that it's this Maddox roofing company, right? Maddox roofing, we need to fix this. This, this means ampersign in computer language that zero, zero 026, um, whoever it was that put in that crazy code probably reads that like it's English. So Matt, Maddox roofing and construction Inc. So now I'm gonna return back to Google maps and now I know who the top ranking one is. So that's gonna be Maddox 
this company right here, right? Um, yep, that's Great Falls, Montana. So this is the top dog for, the, for this city for that turn, right? I'm gonna go look at their website. So this is where like the due diligence really starts to go down is I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna be like, does this look like a tough website? What do you guys think just looking at this? Does this look, what, are you guys feeling like, oh no or oh yeah? It looks like, oh yeah to me. I mean, what do they got? Like 200 words on their homepage? Right. This is looks really, really weak. Right. So I'm going to look at what other pages they have. That looks like a really good page. Right. That's going to help us rank. We've got this about page, which probably doesn't even I mean, this is just like non a nonsense website from a content standpoint. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to run a site command on them. So when you guys are looking at and you're building out your due diligence sheets, what I would do is I would take the stuff that I'm saying now and I would turn this into a metric that you can measure and, 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 and like qualify as you go through and you evaluate this stuff, right? These people have five pages. This is not a tough company that's dominating this map pack for Great Falls. One thing you wanna look at is, let's look at Great Falls, Montana population. 58,000, probably not a niche that I want to go into because what's going to happen is if I go in and I crush it in Great Falls, I don't think I'm going to get enough, um, I don't think I'm going to get enough volume out of it. And, you know, it's like, I could find another city that, that where the top ranking, here's my, here's, I don't know this to be true, but I'm willing to bet I could find a city with 250,000 people for this same niche with a, with a, with a pretty complimentary top competitor as this Maddox roofing company. And I want to be in that spot rather than this, because that's, I'm going to have five times as much volume potentially, you know, depending on whatever local factors, but let's keep on, let's keep on, um, let's keep on picking on these guys a little bit. I'm going to look at their, um, I'm going to look at their, their, their title tags. Do they really, are they going after the right stuff? So they got one of their pages that says employment, right? They're sure. Like, if you were an SEO and you're looking at this, it looks to me like they're trying to rank for employment in Great Falls. Like that's where they're using some of their power of stuff, which is like, that's a waste, right? You don't want to do this like welcome to Max roofing and construction. I wouldn't make my title that. I was on a call with somebody last night. We were actually evaluating this. This is the one I came up with. I would say, um, so I would say Great Falls, here, let's, we, so click-through rate is, is an important factor. How can we get people to click? Google is going to consider click-through rate when they decide how they're going to rank our site. We want to have something appealing, right? So what if I said customers choice, Great Falls roofing, and then I put like this, 2019, 2020. Almost looks like we won an award. I'm not saying we won an award. I've got my keyword in there and I've made this look attractive. Like these parentheses and numbers, they attract people to clicking on things. So like use this, hack the system a little bit, get it in there so that we can manufacture the click rate, right? Once, they, once this comes through and it loads in here, bounce rate is an, and dwell time is another thing that they're considering. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna manufacture my bounce rate. How am I gonna do that? I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look for like, what was my term? It was like roofing contractors. When I type this in, there's these questions down here that Google says that people are asking about this. This is gold for you guys. This is what should be on your pages. How much should I pay a roofer? I'm going to build my page and I'm going to have a question on there that says, how much should I pay a roofer? It can be near the top of the page. And it's going to be like, how much you should pay a roofer depends on where you are. In the Great Falls area, read more. And if you want to get more information, you're going to click and go to this other page. Anyone that clicks on that link is no longer going to be a bounce. So I can manufacture my bounce rate with a little bit of like clickbait, right? Let's get them off the home page. That's what's after they leave the home page and they go to another page on your site, they're no longer a bounce, right? So Google's going to look at that bounce rate, right? So we can load this up with stuff like that. Other stuff, let's put an infographic on there because Google considers dwell time, right? How much time does someone actually spend on the page evaluating this thing? 
So how can we do that? What if I were to look for like roofing infographic online? So these are the ideas that people have come up with throughout the course of the internet history that they think is important about roofing. I could probably hire someone in the Philippines to produce something similar to this. I'm not, I'm not gonna straight copy someone's infographic. I'm just not gonna do that. This right here, this is gonna cause somebody to sit here and look at this for a minute and be like, all right, so that's what's going on. Maybe you wanna to try to find one that's more informative to the user that like combine this. Maybe you make an infographic that answers, answers the questions, right? So you can get some data, get the real information. Instead of trying to trick Google, let's actually give Google what, they're, what they want and then we benefit from that ranking, right? So I would put some of this stuff on my page and I would build it out and I'm gonna get like 1500 words. I know that we've kind of like deviated from due diligence into how to like rank a site strategies, but I think this stuff is important to know. So here's what else I'm gonna do. There's a lot of different tools out there that exist. The one that I use is Ahrefs. I like Ahrefs a lot. All right, so I'm gonna go in here to this like site explorer and I'm gonna put these guys in here and I'm gonna look at maddoxroofing.com and I'm gonna see, okay, so we can see that their DR is a 3.3 and their UR is a 22. Looks like they have $458 in traffic, right? That's, those are important things to know. For those of you guys that don't know what this traffic value means, you hover over this little eye, it says the estimated. So like how much would it cost them if they're paying for Google ads, what would it cost them to get the amount of traffic that they're getting organically if they were paying for ads for the words that they're ranking for? And it's worth $458 according to whatever algorithm they use to determine that. So we can go in here and I can see what they're ranking for. Roofing Great Falls, Montana. That's the one I want to rank for, right? That's, that's uh, roofing. Look at all these roofing ones. I don't know what the difference is between these, like why it's showing it like that, but they're all over that number one position, right? So these guys look like maybe they're the top, maybe they're the top dog in town. Again, it's like, it's a small town, right? They're, they're a big fish in a small pond and they're able to, to like be successful because there's no other fish in there, right? So these guys are a third grader, as we say, like knocking out the third graders. I'm gonna look at their backlinks. So what am I looking for when I'm looking at their backlinks? This is a big part of my due diligence process is I wanna know how good their links are. Are there links coming from places like MapQuest and SuperPages and Porch.com and Deck? Like these are just garbage links. And that's why they have a 0.3 DR because these are links that everyone can get, right? If the, the way this works, this is a 91. So we think that's awesome. But the problem is it's 91 divided by how many links they have on there. So if they've got a million outgoing links, they've got like such a small piece of this, right? So if you look at the UR, that's probably a little bit more telling in this situation. So that's the actual strength of the page that their link is coming from. That's what that means. So none of these things are niche relevant. None of them look like their links from places that I couldn't get a link. If I saw like a um, chamber of commerce link on here and a bunch of stuff like that, then I would be like, okay, these guys are a little bit tougher. But when I go through and I see that this is just like all directories, that's all they have. They only have directory links, right? So that, this, that's a weakness. You go and you look at somebody that's really strong, they're going to have strong links. Maybe, maybe if it's that catering company in Boston, and then there's like some cooking show that mentions them. And then maybe they're on Forbes or CNN and like these links that we're probably not going to be able to get very easily. So that's what I'm looking for, right? I'm going to look at the reviews that they have. So I'm going to dive deep into their GMB. We've already saw that they were the top one. So you can see this catering company has 25 reviews. I don't love to see 25 reviews. I like to see no reviews or two to three. Clearly we can get more than 25 reviews, but that might take us six months, right? So those are some of the things I'm going to look at. I'm probably going to look at their citations as well. There's a number of different tools that we can use to look at citations, but that's kind of my basic process when I go through it. I don't pay as much attention as I used to the fact that it was like one, two, three, and then down here, one, two, three. Um, I do look at to see where they are organically. You can see that um, it looks like Jules Catering is, oh, I'm sorry, you got Yelp, and then this doesn't look like a, a local site. And then you got Jules Catering, that's probably the first local site. 
We've got above ABC. So I don't, I'm not seeing these companies here. Maybe this, is this above ABC? Is that their, yeah, okay. So that's the company above and beyond catering is above ABC. So um, I, I'm sticking with it. I think maybe this company is, you know, well, I don't know. I mean, Boston's such a big, scary, populated area with a ton of competition, I assume. Um, you know, they could be doing really well in this like small area. I, I, I would be surprised if there's one company that's just like dominating the whole area of Boston for it. Okay, cool. So does anybody, uh, does anybody have any questions with this pro? I know I went through it fast. Um, good thing it's recorded and we can, you guys can rewatch this. Does anyone have any questions about this due diligence process and how, how I kind of got through it there? I'll be, I'll be watching the uh, recording. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, Lou, let me know if you have any questions with that, um, the, uh, uh, the, lead, the lead flow management type stuff as well. So I see um, Andrew Nichols, for some of my sites, it shows two organic ranking keywords, but when I punch in the same site to rent tractor and Ahrefs ranking for all the keywords I typed in, what does that mean? Um, for some of my sites, it shows two organic ranking keywords, but when I punch in the same site to, to rank tracker and Ahref, it's ranking for all the keywords. So I don't know what you mean by like where these two different, like where the discrepancy is happening, where it says like you say the first part ranking, it's ranking for two, where, where is that? Is that, hap I, I don't understand where that's happening. Um, so just need a little, sorry, man, I just need a little bit more clarification on that. Andrew, if you want to jump on the actual call, it seems like you've had some good questions, man. I'd be happy to, to um, you know, um, answer any of those in, in real time to make sure that we get down to the root of it. Okay, cool. Um, all right, guys. Well, I wanted to go through this stuff. Um, but if you guys don't have any more questions, we've been on here for like an hour and 20 minutes. I'm trying to keep these things to around an hour so I don't get a, uh, too exhausted and, and um, don't overflow you guys with information. But uh, any final questions before we hop off here? Oh, wait, it looks like Andrew's coming on. Maybe he wants to, maybe he's gonna, maybe he's gonna clarify some of the stuff here. Yeah, great, great call, Patrick. Thank you so much, man. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm gonna, yeah, you I'm gonna answer this for Andrew because he just popped on. Okay. Yeah, I popped on. How you doing, man? I'm good, how about you? Good, man, good, yeah. Great call, Patrick. Thank you so much, man. I think I think maybe you got your uh, audio on on the the Facebook there, Andrew. You just mute that. So yeah, uh, talk to me. Oh, hold hold on. Um, my Facebook's still playing. Just let me turn that off. That's why. I... Okay. You're not the first person to do this. Yeah, I do. I'm just gonna turn that off. Okay, there we go. That's much better. Cool. All right, so uh, what? So you got a couple questions about like um, Ahrefs rank tracking? Yeah, so on Ahrefs, um, when you type in your site, uh, and then you can go to the organic rankings. Um, it says for one of my sites, I'm only ranking for two things, but then if you go over to the right, um, and there's the the rank tracker that it has on it. And I put my site in there, and then you have to manually oh, type in your keywords. Um, it shows where you're ranking, what position you are for the keywords, and I'm ranking for like a bunch of stuff. So I'm just not too sure. That always confused me. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know the answer to your question. I'm glad that you oh, came on and, yeah. and showed your face, but I have no good information for you on that. It's all good. No, no worries. I just uh, here's what I would do. Figured I'd ask anyway. <laughs> you're you're paying for Ahrefs, right? Yeah, absolutely. So their support is really good. They have chat support. Okay. I, I would ask him. I'm like, hey, what is this? And, and I would love it if you find the answer to that. If you would just like share it, share it in our group, so that like other people will know too. Because I hadn't I hadn't noticed that. I personally haven't used the rank tracker a ton. Um, okay. Cause yeah, I've been using that rank tracker quite a bit. Like I usually like get my sites like built out and stuff. And then I throw it in the rank tracker so I can keep like tabs on um, how my sites are doing and stuff. Yeah. It's, 
it, it seems like it's, um, it seems like a really, really uh, useful thing to do. And, and I'm going to have my team start to do it. Did you, I think you had a question earlier on the call did, that maybe I, I also didn't, wasn't able to answer. Is that, yeah, that like what, what I meant was, cause like I, I built out my own uh, due diligence sheet and when I go through it and like I pick um, one of the sheets that I want to use to build a site. Okay. Um, I just wasn't sure if you can like, mark it as like, yeah, I've already built the site for this, but then without gotcha. deleting it. I, I think that like, now that I'm thinking about it, it would be a really good kind of attribute for us to add in there so that we can, um, so that you can go and, and maybe just like automatically hide these, right? So yeah. that yeah, just would so be a simple feature for us to add. Like doing hundreds, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I can get that in there. I think that's a great idea. That might be cool. like, uh, like, like Laurent, Laurent asked earlier. Um, he, or, or, like he made a video for me with some ideas. And I haven't had a chance to dive into it yet, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going through that and adding a lot of features to this. And I see that Don just jumped on I and mean, then maybe he jumped off, but he sent me a question here that says, Wondering why the water area are ranking two. So basically, whether it's land or water, right? Like Google still exists. And it may be that it's not important, but like they're basically using location and trying to give people the best information. So I guess in the rare situation, let me go back here and where someone searches for IT support while they're out on their boat in the middle of the ocean, if they're over here in this spot, then you're gonna, this is where you're gonna be showing up. So like our tool is gonna give you Google results, whether it's like on land or water or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's any other material that it could be on, but it's gonna like do the search as if it's where, wherever those locations are. So if you don't care about those, you've got two options, you can like, ignore it or you can do what we did earlier on the call where you can kind of draw it out on your own using like if we go back to um do a new heat map right and i'm just going to choose this one real quick so if i want to oh no maybe it's still in my search history nope. super cool plugin right here this I'm not going to show my all my copy stuff, but this will let you copy uh, this this guy right here, this clip clipboard pro, clip history pro. It'll save like your last 150 um, things that you had in your clipboard. So this is that catering one again. So if I choose catering here, just to kind of reiterate this, I showed this earlier on the call, but maybe I don't know if you were on then, Don. But what you can do is you can decide right. where if you wanted to like not draw around the you know, not include the water, you can do one of these guys and decide where you want it to go, right? So I can make whatever shape I want and cr create the dimensions of it. But by default, it might just go into the water if you don't do that and, and you're using like a coastal city. So, um, so yeah. yeah uh, sorry, I, I, I sent a ticket to, um, I don't know if you saw that or somebody else saw it, but if I actually do this versus the square one, it actually gives me a different result. Um, that's why I was, that's why I'm using the squared ones. Okay. Like so yeah, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier on this call too, is like, once you start drawing your own shape, then it's going to take like this stuff goes out the door, right? It's no longer now we've got, so, so this was 13 by 13. So there's 169 dots that exist and it's going to take those and it's going to fit it in. Right. So let's just let's drive this home let's say i make this square and there's 169 dots right and then we have the ability to reshape this so now i've got 169 dots that are crammed into that little area same amount of dots much smaller area so when you draw this like if you drew the same square it should be exactly the same but if you do something like this these results are going to be really different because you you've you've changed variables in the equations essentially, right? So um, I think that's how it's working. That's how it should be working. I, well, 
I know that's how it should be working. I'm not saying that, um, you know, if you, if you made a ticket and we've got an issue, there could be the, the potential for an issue that we have, but I, I don't think so. I, I think it could be that. Also what's happening is like the auto zoom level is gonna be adjusting based on, on the size. So the, the, the auto zoom level is like a really, it's kind of, there's a lot of math and complicated stuff going on with this zoom where it's kind of looking at things and saying like, okay, this size, how many companies are here? Which one should we choose? So if you were to go to, I think here, um, so you can kind of see uh, like if I zoom out, maybe, maybe if I, let me go back here. Let me search for like roofing company. There's a lot of variables going on here that can affect this stuff. And you can see if I zoom out, you see where it says like zoom 11 Z. So it's using a zoom level of 11. So those results are really different than, well, maybe not for great where, for like great falls, Montana, but in a lot of places, as you zoom in and out, those results will change a lot. And when you start changing some of those variables, not only are you changing like the density of the points on the grid, you're also changing the zoom level. So um, I don't know if that's accounting for it or we potentially have a bug, but um, I can, I'll certainly have one of my guys. I'll look at your ticket, Don, and I'll have our guys go through it and we'll analyze that to make sure that the results are consistent. But it's using longitude and latitude no matter like where the, like once you define those, it's basically just operating exactly the same where it's saying, search from this point, scrape the results, put it in here and move on to the next point. Cool, thanks. Uh, I do have one suggestion though. Um, when Andrew mentioned about the due, due diligence, yeah, how to like delete it or something, can you actually set a way to maybe add that to the, the lead gen or the, the client? Once you do have that set up, you just attach it to it, attach to it. You know, like okay, um, so. So your question is, is like to make an association from their original lead, due sorry, diligence sorry. sheet to the actual the website and the client, right? Uh, to the lead or to the company. To the company. See, uh, when you say to the lead, uh, what do you mean by to the lead? Sorry, one second. Let's say uh, you, you do due diligence for um, for catering Boston, and let's say uh, you got a website up in there, and you add it to lead gen. You know, once you once you got that set up, is that way you can actually add the due diligence to that new legion that you created. That way, you don't have to like delete it. You don't have to like create a new um, box. You can just see that okay. hey, this is actually the due diligence that I, due diligence that I did for this oh, uh, legion gotcha. website. Yeah, that shouldn't be too hard for us at all. Um, it's it, I had never thought about making that relationship, but it makes sense, you know, so that you can kind of have that association with it. So. This is our company dashboard, right? So maybe it would be cool if there was like a link on here that had our, like if there was like a due diligence tab and then we, if we had a, a worksheet that showed up there, right? So that's kind of what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. I like that idea, Devon. That's interesting. You guys look, these ideas are awesome. And I know that we get on here and we like kind of get going, but we're listen, we listen to your guys' recommendations. My goal is to have, um, as many users on this and, and have the users be as happy as possible and your guys recommendations on what we're looking for that helps us move towards that goal so um i i don't like if you you know if you've got ideas i don't, I don't take this stuff personal it's like I, like hey let's make this thing as awesome as possible so that you guys are paying for it right and and we're listening so let's work together to like get this thing to the next level right so uh any ideas you guys have i've got a sheet every single idea that people have i save it and I kind of like go back and try to prioritize things. And, you know, in the future, we're going to have a voting system where you guys can vote on what you think we should do next. And we can kind of listen to the, the, the group. Um, cool. So it's Don's idea to be able to show the client, like the due diligence you've done. I, I, was I correct in assuming that? I was trying to figure out the relation to the due diligence to the client. So I think there's two things that could be, it could be useful for. I, obviously this is Don's question, but um, one thing could be to show the, the client too. I think it would be really useful when you go in, you guys need to learn. You guys need to learn from your mistakes that you make. And I think it's important when you like do your due diligence, you go down a path and then you find out more information later. Let's look back. How long did it take to rank? 
and what was I up against? And now when I go into a new market, maybe I can more accurately predict my results based on this past stuff. So I think it's good for that, for that part of it. Um, yeah, so I, was, I was thinking more just for myself, not for yeah. the client, just for myself. So, so you can kind of like evaluate your decision-making process and potentially improve it based on your results. That, is, is, that, is that how you're thinking about it? I like it, Don. I like it. My, I have one concern before we go. I just want to, every call that Dave Matthews has been on, we've had a chat and he, you haven't said anything, man. And I just want to check in. Everything cool for you? You doing all right? Appreciate it. Uh, I actually had a question before you were going to go. But Let's hear it, baby. You, know. Where, you got a new background. No more, no more motorcycles in the background. Oh, it's there. I just try to keep things a little interesting every time, you know? Okay. I appreciate it. Um, just a small quick thing was um, in the feedback funnel when somebody actually fills it out and it sends an email. Um, I've been trying to test the system, but it appears as though when doing so that it will pop in the information after the person fills it out into the lead generated software. But if for some reason I don't set up a client to actually log in and look at that. Is there any way of it generating an email with that same information right to the client's email address? Yeah, right here. So there's this area called notifications. You, my screen's still shared, right? You guys can see my yeah. screen? Yeah. So there's this area down here called notifications and you can turn this on and then you can enter in as many email addresses as you want for, for that. So that's tied to this, to this company. And this is the feedback notification. So that will actually, in fact, send an email to whoever those recipients are that have all the same information that was filled out on the form. That's right. That into it. Yep, exactly. Okay. I was, I think I was kind of missing the purpose of that particular piece. No, I mean, this is an opportunity for me to make it more clear. Like, it, you, you know, um, I should probably have it something that explains this better. If that's like, I know that you've gone through the documentation and stuff. So I need to find a way to make that more clear to our users so that they understand that that's how that works. So um, yeah, but we've got that thing lined up for you. So we should be, get, there's one thing I wanted to show you guys before we hop off here. So I don't know how this is gonna work. I was trying to mess around with how I could mirror my phone and I couldn't do it, but I'll show you guys what's coming here. If I can get this right. Ah. It's not good. Hold on. Let me turn this little light off here. Maybe it'll work this way. Okay, cool. Can we see this now? Nope, still too bright. Can I see it from an angle? We have our mobile applications that we're working on now. So this is our mobile application. God, this is really hard to do where it's not reflecting. I know that it's only showing you the side, but that's actually a lead coming through. So this is our iPhone application. Didn't go as well as I wanted to. I'll, I will maybe record a video and share it with you guys, but we're getting ready to release. We've got the iPhone and the Android application and they've been, been worked on for months and months. So we're about to have those. What this is gonna mean for you guys and your clients is your clients, you can have your clients install this mobile application. And then let's change the way, let's change the possibilities for how our clients can receive leads. What if they could get a push notification Instead of having to be like a text message, instead of having to be an email or whatever, they can just get a push notification and they can open it up and then they can start a conversation with that lead right from the application. They can click on the phone number there to text them. Um, we're going to have texting built into this thing. Um, reputation management, re review requests, all sorts of different things are going to be able to done, be done right from your phone. So um, we're at the point now where we have it functioning. I've been playing with it on my phone. I've actually got my Android and iPhone, so that I can play it, test it for both of these, but we're getting close. You know, we're getting close. Development is one of those things that it's just, um, it's hard to, um, it's hard to predict how long things are going to take. You know, you start running into things and can't accurately count dependencies on how things are going to affect it, but um, I'm excited to get that out there for you guys. I think it's going to be really useful for your clients to be able to have a mobile app where they, like, they can just like track their business and, and it's gonna improve deliverability incredibly where we can just, um, you know, where we can just have it sent and pop up on their phone 
in real time, right? We don't have to go through email servers and all this other stuff, right? So uh, I'm excited for that. So Don, the place that you can send uh, recommendations, if you go up here in the top right and you click on submit a tickets, I think you said you submitted a ticket. There's actually a category here that says feature request, right? And then you can just fill that in there. And uh, you know, it's useful if you kind of give us a good subject here that maybe talks about what, what module it's gonna be in, right? So um, you are welcome, man. Okay, cool. So try to keep this thing to an hour. It's been an hour and 37 minutes, 38 minutes. So I'm gonna hop off here. I appreciate you guys. You guys have an awesome week. I hope you guys enjoyed the call and uh, we'll see you in the group. Let's talk soon. All right, take care, All everybody. Right. Stay safe. Thanks, Patrick. You're welcome. Everybody. All right. Adios, amigos. Thanks. Mm -hmm.